Hello, I'm John from the Hot Informer. And I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And this is episode 35 of Fall Informer. And today we have a special guest, a past reviewer, the October Panic Attack, Dante. How you doing? Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. How did you decide to call your YouTube channel October Panic Attack? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, some people thought that it was just a, a really kind of a cool name working off of fear. Yeah. Um, when in actuality, um, I have suffered from panic disorder uh, for yeah. a uh, predominantly um, after my grandfather died, it really started to rear its ugly head. Probably I was about 24 um, and I'm 44 now. Uh, so I was about 24 and I uh, started the October panic attack at about 25. And the idea was um, I was inspired by my panic attacks at the time. Um, I actually was at a level where I, there was one point I almost lost my job because I was, uh, I was agoraphobic. I couldn't leave my apartment for 14 days at one point. Um, I almost had to relearn how to drive, uh, how to leave the house, stuff like that. And so my love for horror, my love for haunted houses, um, uh, I would be in a haunted house and um, sometimes have a panic attack uh, from certain situations. Uh, the things that would trigger me would be pitch blackness um, uh, or um, the worst, um, a very bright room that's completely fogged. Um, so basically areas where I feel like... Um, I can't get out. I don't know where I am, stuff like this. Yeah. And people would say to me, what are you, out of your mind? Like, how, how do you like haunted houses? Why do you continue to do this? And I was like, my love for haunted houses and for horror is um, so passionate that and so intense that those little elements of panic, yeah, it actually got to the point where haunted houses and my love for haunted houses was actually helping me fight my panic disorder oh, okay. so i was facing my phobias i was facing my fears um and it was really a very very positive thing that most normal people would not do obviously but no. um, and um at its core essence um halloween horror haunted houses um are the thing that comforts me the most um so that's kind of the background and, and because it's based on reality i don't have the panic disorder i used to have um at all good uh, i basically just you know fought it through a variety of techniques and things like that maybe haunted houses helped out a bit um and um I mean, we were, my wife and I were married in Canada and we went to some of the most extreme haunted houses that would challenge my, my phobias <laughs> to like the worst level possible. Yeah. Um, like you, there's no safe, like you can't get out. Um, okay. So even if you say I need to get out, you can't get out. And I remember that's where the name you know, so I was always just gladly walking right into my phobias um, and inviting other people to do the same thing. I, I, there'd be people in our crew, Glenn, who had some reservations about haunted houses. And I would say to them, do you like, do you like hard? Is yeah, I'm just, I'm claustrophobic. But so am I. Let's have a good time. <laughs> you know um so that's where uh yeah, that's where it came from yeah long story yeah <laughs> thank you for telling me <laughs> great all right so dante when you were younger um when you bought a magazine would you always buy the first one or a couple one fat <laughs> a couple ones back a couple ones back because you don't want all the grossness of the people touching the first one right you want a couple <laughs> ones back nice and Right. 
exactly. And I, I want it to be, I want it to, I want those pages to be smell worthy, man. I want to smell that fresh ink. Yeah, yeah no, of course. Yeah. But, uh, speaking, speaking of being younger in your childhood, um, talk to me about the haunted houses and dark rides down at Wildwood. I know that played a big role um, in you growing up and your love for haunted houses. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was raised uh, predominantly in Wildwood. Uh, that that was the place I, I went. I didn't. Well, actually, I I, I did live there uh, for. I lived in Wildwood uh, at one point for. Uh, I think close to a year, um, and uh, with my my mom was a single mom at that time with her crazy girlfriend, and uh, it was a wild time because I was five years old and anything went at that point. So I I, I remember. Uh, spending a lot of time on the boardwalk and I remember um, uh, I would hear which is one of my favorite songs of all time now Toccato in D Fugue Minor I always screw it up it's the din -din -din, din -din 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 -din. Okay. and it was echoing from in the Wildwood boardwalk from Castle Dracula from Dracula's, Dracula's Castle and I would hear it and immediately I'm going to be somewhat uh, candid here. I would immediately uh, have to go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> it, it would it would immediately make me nervous. Um, and but I was absolutely mystified by it. Um, so I was scared to death. But I would tell my mom, "Can you please walk me to the front of Castle Dracula?" Okay. And my mom would say, "Why? You're not going in." And I'd say, I just want to look at it. And so I would stand there and listen to the song, and I would see these gypsies who were running it, yelling at people in character and, and, and taking these wooden planks and slamming them on the... There were these steps that the line, once you got closer and closer to the door, you would start to go up the steps and wait in line. And okay. I just remember the, the sound of the whack on the steps. I could hear it from from all the way back and they would be cursing and screaming at the people in line like in character and i and i remember i was just like i was like this is like you know and every year every year every year i was absolutely obsessed with it and then finally i don't know the age but i was probably about 10 11 12 somewhere around there um i i finally went in with my mom and um, and it was everything that I thought it was. Um, I was uh, I can still smell it. it oh, yeah, smelled, smelled musty and dirty. Um, and from there, there were these offshoots on Wildwood Boardwalk. Okay, um, that would sometimes only be there for one summer, and mm -hmm. then they'd be gone. And there was one in particular. I don't remember the name. Um, I was probably about 12. Okay. And I was there with my cousin. And I remember crawling on my hands and knees through pitch black corridors. And I didn't know where the hell, what we were doing. I didn't know where we were. I was terrified. We couldn't get out. And I just remember there was... Again, a real deal gypsy woman who was running it and just kind of not nice and kind of uh, like you get in there and you shut up or like something like this. I mean, it was like <laughs> it was like it was like amazing. So like my my love of haunted houses started weirdly enough when it was 85 to 90 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> um so haunted houses started in the summer that's where my memories that's where my memories started for haunted houses because of wildwood boardwalk and there was a dark ride those were those were places you walked but there was a dark ride that absolutely mystified me because it had my name in it it had my <laughs> name in it and and it, it, it blew my mind and at the time it was called dante's inferno uh, okay yep yep and now because of modern society and, and 
some political stuff. They've changed it to Dante's Dungeon. They got rid of all the people uh, suffering, mutilated bodies. <laughs> and now it's just gothic. Uh -huh. And um, But at the time, there were paintings of mutilated bodies on the front. There was this huge red demon on the top that was billowing smoke out of its mouth with horns. And, and I remember my name was in it and I was just like, what the hell? And, and, and I would stand out there and, be, and wait for the smoke to pour out of the demon's mouth because it would happen like every maybe five minutes. And yeah. I'm just stand there. And then eventually, if I if my memory serves me correct, I would maybe I would I definitely went on Dante's Inferno before I went into Castle Dracula, definitely. Okay. Um, and um, so th those were so Wildwood Boardwalk was that was where I got schooled. And the funny thing, Glenn, the funny thing is, is that initially my only interest was in any rides that were haunted um i didn't have any interest in roller coasters i didn't have any interest in um things that spun around i didn't have any interest in that um i was a very scared nervous kid um and if i wasn't going on the haunted houses i was essentially just staring at them <laughs> <laughs> and, and then just staring at the other rides that I couldn't go on because I was scared. Um, so eventually that all changed, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And then I was going on loop to loops and everything else. But 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 that was that has always been my first love, and, and it was my first love on the boardwalk. Um, I would be more apt to go on a roller coaster at that time if there were vampires and paintings on it or something or if the ride was called like you know blood death or something like that i might i might be like hmm, you know um but that's where it started that's where it started awesome have you ever heard of the saw roller coaster yes yeah yeah i i, I have obsessed on youtube over it yeah. because that first drop oh yeah looks, it's like <laughs> yeah it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. And they, it does a corkscrew, and there's like a body on the ceiling. It like drops water on you. It's great. amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> I don't. I, I, I wouldn't do that today, but amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, talking about your crazy interactions with haunted houses, tell me what was your most unique interaction during the blood experience of Hose of Horror? <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing a lot because. <laughs> uh, for me um when i laugh a lot i just want to put a precursor when i laugh a lot laughing and screaming go hand in hand uh with me okay. um i am not desensitized at all to horror to horror mm -hmm. movies to this day yeah. i'm still scared and i'm still scared of haunted houses uh and i and i will laugh at myself as well but uh, um my wife and i did the blood experience when the blood experience first started yeah um, so it was kind of a new a new thing. And it was the only time I was in a haunted house um, mm -hmm. where it's all a blur to me. Um, I remember feeling like I was getting hurt, but mm -hmm. that I was on the edge of getting hurt, but I never got hurt, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah, I understand. I, rem I remember... I remember my wife and I being picked up and thrown. I remember like um, very claustrophobic situations where like being manhandled. And, and I remember like, I rem like, I remember walking out of there yeah. with my, with my wife yes. and we were exhilarated. Like <laughs> that was amazing. But, I couldn't necessarily tell you what happened. Okay. Um, because it was such a... It, it was such a violent, like... <laughs> it was such a violent experience of, like, screaming and manhandling and liquids. So many liquids being shot 
I, I don't think I was ready for it in my face as much. Yeah. And when you have liquids being shot in your eyes and in your face, yes. and you're, you're, you can't see or you can't breathe for a second. <laughs> and then you're like thrown up against a wall. And I mean, it's like, it was craziness, man. So I can't tell you. I, I can't even think. I do remember one thing. And the only thing I remember was this huge dude. And I forget his name. I don't even know if he still works there. But he was the biggest actor in there. He's huge. And I remember being in a kitchen. Okay. And, and him making some joke about an aborted baby or something. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and, and, and something, abortion or something. It was, it was something like that. And, um, and, you know, they were, they were cursing at us. They were, um, they were making like, um, offensive jokes towards us, like everything. I mean, it was, it was everything that I heard it was. <laughs> and, um, uh we only did it one time and um the blood experience and um it was it was it was hard i mean it, it i would say it was the most physically demanding haunt uh i've ever been in, to this day to this day yeah so like glenn's crazy because he went through multiple times with his girlfriend <laughs> yeah we did it we did it multiple for three years i think we we've done it um it is not a it is not a um your standard run-of-the-mill haunt it is uh they give you goggles now <laughs> they, they, would oh, have they, to. they would have to um yeah, it's, it's very it's, offensive uh, too very offensive yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i remember the one lady there was like this lady on like a like a gurney type thing and there's like these like babies that were like shooting from her like into it like a dumpster you remember that you remember that <laughs> yeah yeah that i there's something with a board like yeah baby yeah. dead but yeah 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 they had this thing they were like shooting like these like babies into like a dumpster like, <laughs> oh my god not not there's no way that like if you had any type of like sensitivity or, or, or find something offensive you couldn't go through oh it. my god it, yeah it was it was wild but they give you those warnings ahead of time like they tell you this is not you know this is not for young kids you know uh, and and we did uh videos for them and i'll never forget when we we filmed movies in there and these mini commercial movies and the, the guy that led it said to me we want the videos to be offensive and um, I can talk more about that later if you want. But yeah, uh, and and how he how he wanted them to be offensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's insane. He, great oh. people though. Great. Oh people. yeah. Oh, very nice. Oh man, it's yeah. some of the nicest staff out there. <laughs> as they yeah. trying to like you know destroy you, <laughs> bring you up and bring you down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Um. So go through all all your experiences, Dante, of all these different haunts. You know, you've gone through many, many haunts over many years. Um, in your experience, what is your favorite crayon color? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go obvious here. I just got done uh, doing, um, I was painting some ceramic pumpkins with my daughter. Um, and she said to me, why why is everything you do creepy <laughs> so i'm going to i'm going to go with um i'm going to go with black i do like black crayons uh, second best would probably be orange <laughs> red is in there too yeah awesome um talk to me about these uh commercials and ads you filmed for haunts cuz you did okay. a lot of them and there's a lot and they're still all on youtube yeah so uh, so how did that um, come about the uh the um one of the best times of my life was if i were to make a list of the best times of my life so far that was one of the best times of, of my life um so october right Pentecost, above right above getting married and having a kid right that, that would be above that no 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 yeah no those are those would probably be uh down, they wouldn't even down. be they wouldn't even be on the list yeah there's okay like, good 
yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh my gosh. So, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in, in by the way, in the credits of one of my movies, at the mm. closing credits of one of my movies, one time it said in the closing credits, No thanks to my wife and my daughter, uh, I hate you both. Um, anyways. <laughs> Oh my God. That's, yeah that's my humor anyways um so we were making movies uh, october panic attack started in 2005 but so did apartment 1014 films and so we were making our own movies and i got to the point where i said to my wife i said you know what why don't we try to combine the two worlds so um i literally made a pitch on a piece of paper and I started to call 20, 25 hawks. I just was calling them, calling them. I was on the phone with Marlo from Hotel of Horror for two hours as she was trying to understand what I wanted to do. And my, <laughs> yeah. So my, my, what I said to them was, I do not want to get paid. Okay. So throw that out the window. Um, we want to drive to your haunt off season, August. So the month of August, we want to drive to your haunt. And I want to film five to seven one minute long movies in your haunted house with your actors, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in your place. And we'll call them commercials uh, that you can put on your YouTube page and um, the rights will uh, will will be dual you'll own them i'll own them we'll both own them okay so there you go um and it came out to 97 one minute movies so it was 12 haunted houses and 97 one minute movies and i put it into a long movie which is on the the vimeo page and it's uh october panic magic so it's like two and a half hours of these you get to see all the haunts, all the, you know, so it's a, a real Halloween experience. Nice. We were driving to these places. And what I didn't realize was, is just how surreal and weird it was going to be. Um, because some of the haunts didn't have electricity hooked up yet. So <laughs> if I didn't bring my external battery powered lighting, you know, um, and I was writing scripts. I was writing one minute scripts um, okay. for so I would come to a haunt with seven one minute scripts and I would think about the haunt, you know. Um, and the haunts overall thought that they were a bit weird. <laughs> um, That's funny that a haunt would say it's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, they thought they were a bit weird, and and my idea was was to make commercials for a hunt that were not your typical, not like, you know, demon house. You see, you hear like loud, yeah. you hear heavy metal music, and then you see this guy come up like, "Come to our house." Like I wanted to do something <laughs> different, you know. Okay. Like those those are cool, yeah. But I just wanted to do like something different, and man driving out to those places um sometimes it was a two-hour drive and we would work so fast and so hard and I, my i always told them we will not be at your haunt for longer than i think it was two and a half or three hours so we're just going to machine gun this and we will leave um and it was weirder and more hardcore than I could have expected it to be. Um, <laughs> and you don't realize how terrifying it is until you walk up to the haunt and there are 15 actors staring at you <laughs> and waiting for you to direct them. And the owners, the, all the owners, they said, hi, Dante. Okay, bye. And they would leave us. They would, they would leave us there with them. Oh my and gosh. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh. So I, so it really, we were already making movies, but this experience 
taught so much more, but it, it also solidified the connected haunted houses with movie making. And it was on another level. Um, we had real spiders on us because the haunts weren't cleaned out yet. We had, <laughs> um, we had an act. I'll never forget this girl. She couldn't breathe and she had a panic attack and they had to take Jeez. her out because there was no, it wasn't cold out. So we mm. were filming in the attic of hotel of horror. Okay. And it was probably, I mean, I don't know, 95 degrees up there, maybe higher. Mm, and uh, my biggest concern was that my camera that I was using high eight tape, that okay. the cameras would, malfunction from the heat or from the dust or you know whatever yeah and um we got to see behind the scenes we got we got, oh man it, it was and uh that was amazing like that that was amazing the smell of hay the smell of dust the smell and then you got to meet all the owners and you got to be in their world and um it was funny because certain haunts would say to me I want you to go hard. I want you. I, I want this hard, man. I want to. You go full throttle. I don't care what anybody thinks. Halls of Horror said, and um, and then I knew Hotel of Horror wanted stuff evil, so I tried to go really dark, and then some. I remember some of the actors said to me, "Some of this is, is a little weird." <laughs> <laughs> um, but. <laughs> I would say the people that were the most weirded out <laughs> were probably a tie between Frightland and um, and Night of Terror. Okay. They were, I felt like maybe they didn't know what to do with the videos too much. Like they were just like, eh, we liked some of it, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but it was an unbelievable experience and then after we did that my wife and i were able to go into those 12 haunts the next month for free because the haunts mm -hmm. were like we're gonna let you come in i mean you did this we're gonna let you come in and it was just my wife and i that year and there was something um there was something really magical about being in these places that we were just in when they weren't open yet. Yes. It was amazing. And and they allowed me to use my own music. So I was I was making my own music to score each one of those one minute jobbies. And oh, it was a dream. It was a dream come true. Some people dream of having a Ferrari. Some people <laughs> dream of of having living in a mansion. Yeah. And I, I sometimes I'll say to people, I'll say to maybe to Glenn, my, my wife or whoever, I'll say, I'm living the dream. The fact that I have masks around me right now and I'm wearing a Halloween shirt and I'm talking about Halloween on YouTube. Yeah. I'm living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's that's all I ever wanted. You know. Um, but yeah, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> I highly recommend people watching those those ads and commercials because a lot of those haunts, at least two of them. I know of, aren't even in, in existence anymore. So it's really cool to go back and see those old horns. I know like the freaking fun house and Lulu's and I'm not sure. Devil's, if in, Devil's Folly. Devil's Folly. Okay. They don't even exist anymore. So go back and watch them and just see the, you know. It's a time capsule. Man. That's like, a, yes, exactly. It's a time, oh yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's super cool. So I want to ask you, of all the different scare techniques that you have witnessed at haunted attractions, what was the most memorable to you? Um, the most memorable, and it's always difficult for me to say most, but one that really pops um, into my head is um, there's something about the, the use of sound um people will oftentimes say that it would be difficult to watch 
the horror genre if you were deaf. Um, okay. And I would say that could be the case. Uh, we've made we made some films uh, that had no sound, but yeah, okay. that that would be sound. They're okay, both from the same place. Okay. Um, Hotel of Horror started at another location when they first right. began. It was about 20 minutes away from where they reside today. And it wasn't called the Hotel of Horror. Uh, it was called Altered Nightmares, just Altered Nightmares. Today, it's both, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it was just Altered Nightmares. And I remember we didn't know what the hell it was. Um, and we were at a time now we were like, we were like drug addicts. Like we were basically looking for more and more mom and pop that nobody has ever heard of before. So okay. we were like junkies. Like we, we were, we were like <laughs> looking, I was, I, I was constantly on the internet, like, you know, and I was looking for a new high kind of, kind of thing. And, um, <laughs> we, we go into alter nightmares and I love midnight syndicate. I love Knox Arcana. I love, I love horror soundtracks. I love all that stuff. But there's something about the sound that they had in alter nightmares that first year that was, it was so bad. It was so, um, it, 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 it took me out of the fact that it was a haunted attraction and it felt like I was in hell or I felt like I was, I was having, I was having a panic attack or I was having a nightmare. Like I was, it was, there was nothing fun about it at all. There was nothing campy about it. There was nothing cool about it. There was nothing creepy even. It was just, Oh, it was bad. It was bad sound. It was like, um, it was atonal. There was no melody. And it was, it's hard to describe. It, it, it was oppressive. It was very oppressive. Um, you know, Glenn, Glenn and I have talked about, you know, the, uh, the sounds in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yes, yes, yes. So like camera flashes. Yeah, there's no music in that movie. It's just yeah. Yeah. okay. But it was it was nonstop oppression, and that tactic set us up for anything because they could have done anything to me, mm -hmm. and I was in their hands. I was in their hands because. Within one minute of being in there, mm -hmm. I wanted to get the hell out because, <laughs> like, I remember, I remember I was putting my fingers in my ears at one point because I just uh -huh. I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it anymore. And and um, the use of sound, uh, which would be twofold with when they moved, and they had the Hotel of Horror. They used sound in a different way when you were walking up the steps to get higher and higher to the attic. And in the background, you heard preaching. Oh, okay. And it was the satanic priest or something. Okay. And I just remember we were walking and I'm, you know, there's people everywhere and I'm hearing this echo of somebody and I'm like, what is that? And it's getting louder and louder and louder. And it's just like... I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and, and eventually it's getting louder and louder and you know you're getting closer and closer and closer. And when you finally saw the thing that you were hearing the sound of, it was too much. Like it was overwhelming. Um, I remember seeing a cross of baby heads and I remember seeing a man in a goat outfit and I remember upside down crosses and 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 pews, church pews, and and flashes of light, and this man with a with a thong on who was hogtied, 
and like all, like all like it was just like <laughs> what? it was like craziness like um so the use of sound um the use of sound definitely um and if a, a, a close tie was a haunt that does not exist anymore uh called Easton Haunts they were called Easton Haunts and they um, did things that nobody else ever did. I've never seen anybody do what they did. And of course, they closed. They would take the walls and they would constantly move them. Uh -huh. They would shift. So you'd be walking and there were people taking the walls and rolling them back and forth and moving. So you would, and then new people would be jumping in at all. It was, it was crazy. So th those two things come to mind like the most. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Talk to me about um, you doing your own little, you, you didn't have like a home haunt, but on Halloween night, you opened up your house to trick-or-treaters. And I'm not talking just like outside. Kids came in. I mean, kids walked through your living room, through your kitchen, down your basement, back up, out again. I mean, this was not like an outside home haunt. It was yeah. one night only on Halloween. For trick or treaters, talk to me about. Talk to us about that. Yeah, uh, it was inspired by. There is a DVD that's out um, by the actor Dan Roebuck. Okay. Uh, and he made a DVD uh, called Halloween Haunting of America, and you can still get it on Amazon. Um, uh, it's from 2005 or whatever. And I remember I watch it every Halloween, every every season, and um, there's a good deal about home. Uh, doing things in your home and it would make me really emotional like I, I was like why is this making me so emotional like seeing the children crying and screaming and I, and I was just like you know and um, I remember being a five-year-old and um, urinating in my pants while I was trick-or-treating um, <laughs> there was a guy that chased um, me with a chainsaw in 1983 before chainsaws were a thing on hayrides and um this all tied in so we recruited glenn we recruited um uh, about five or six people adults and we rehearsed a few things and basically um i had a sign outside of our house uh, for about a month before advertising it, it was called Mrs. Death's Lair of Nightmares. And um, we had a projection screen outside the house that was showing an hour-long loop of horror movie images. Um, and my wife was Mrs. Death. She was outside the door kind of making sure everybody was cool. And there was a line. There was a line, Glenn. Did you remember that? There was a mm -hmm. line outside the door for like three hours. And wow. people were coming in in twos and, and stuff like that. And the deal was is that we were giving out full-size candy bars. Uh, so uh, you, if you did, you could get a full-size candy bar per floor. So okay. if you did the main floor, you get a full-size. And if you do the top floor, you did a full-size. If you do the basement, you get a full-size. And um, it was horrible. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like, there was a, there was a piece. One of the worst pieces, I think, uh, was there was this, there was this brother and sister. We don't even know who these people are. There's this brother and sister, <laughs> um, in our up, in our upstairs bathroom, mm -hmm. and I'm in the shower, and they don't know. And the bathroom is pitch black and there's horrible, scary music playing in the bathroom. And I, the, the brother and sister are probably, the sister's probably nine, the brother's probably five. And I hear the brother say, I don't like this. I want to, I want to get out of here. And I had a dilemma in my head. I said, well, it is Halloween and they are in here, so I'm going to do it. And I ripped the shower curtain away and jumped out, and I was dressed as a werewolf, and it was horrible. Um, <laughs> I, I basically 
we did this thing where they would go into the bathroom and we would it would get locked from the outside so they couldn't get out of the bathroom. <laughs> then as soon as I jumped out, the door would become unlocked. And when they ran out, there'd be somebody on their knees who dressed as a clown. And as soon as they left, they'd be like, like, it was horrible. It was horrible. Oh, my God. Horrible. <laughs> and the base, Glenn worked the basement, and the basement was horrible. Uh, there were the sounds of the dinner scene of Texas Chainsaw Massacre were on a loop. And um, kids, oh, man. It, it, <laughs> yeah, like tons of fog, tons of live actors. Lots of situations that were very uh, scary and disturbing and creepy. There was a scene where I think Glenn did this, where I have this fake uh, candy man like holder, like so he's like a looks like a like a little person and he's holding a bowl and it has candy in it. Well, I put a clown mask on him and then I put Glenn on his knees next to him with the same mask on. So now they think they're both fake. Well, when they when they went up to reach their hand in, Glenn took his bowl, which didn't have real candy in it. It had confetti, and he threw it into their faces. And then, <laughs> and then they, they they screamed. And then they turned around, and there was an actor laying on their back on the floor that they never saw, and. They were contorting their body like you know, like this. Wow. I mean, it, it was horrible. It was horrible. Like, it, and um, I wish I'd we, gone through this. <laughs> it was. It, it was. I remember a few people, like parents, like looked in, like the looked inside. They're like, "Yeah, we're not going through this." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. And we had a teen. My favorite though were teenagers. They okay. were my favorite because. I love teenagers because they trash talk. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So, like, yeah. um, this one teenager came up with a skateboard. Okay. He ran out and left his skateboard <laughs> at the front step and ran. Like, he just ran out, and, and it was the best. Like, that, that was just, <laughs> you know. Um, we did have a dad come in with his son, and I remember – he came in, and within maybe 30 seconds, he literally said, F this. <laughs> and then they, they left. Like, I don't know what was more offensive. Like, he thinks our haunted house is offensive when he just said F in front of his five-year-old. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Call me crazy. But anyway, so that was something that we continued that we did that for a few years but that year that glenn was there it was at its that was the biggest thing we ever did um and then when we moved we started to do haunted house experiences just for our friends uh, okay uh glenn came to one of those and so we started to do some experiences just for adults that we knew you okay. know kind of thing okay um where we would tie them up and <laughs> <laughs> no, too serious. Really? I remember not tying up, but I remember like sitting in your bathroom in the pitch black with a bag over my head. <laughs> <laughs> and thinking it's perfectly normal. Because you know, it's Dante's house, so it's perfectly normal. <laughs> uh, it sounds like you're doing stuff way before Rob Zombie thought of putting bags over people's heads and putting Oh them yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, you know, what's funny is, and I don't know if Glenn knows this, my haunted houses started when I was about 12 years old. Um, I was raised in an apartment complex. We lived on the top floor. Okay. And um, I lived in a very small bedroom. Okay. Um, and I would put on 20-minute haunted houses in that small bedroom. Wow. And there was a line out of the apartment complex at one point and i had my friends in the elevator bringing people up my parents were serving drinks and <laughs> and cookies while people waited in line so like this was this is something that's been going on um and i remember my i had some relatives come 
and they ran out of my bedroom um <laughs> like within a couple minutes and i do remember there was a scene where i had bunk beds okay and they would sit on the bottom bunk and we gave them a canoe rowers okay and you, you started to hear water okay and then all of a sudden my friends and I would take them and pull them off the bed with pillow slides so they wouldn't get hurt. And we would pull them down and put them in black trash bags, their whole body. We would put their whole body in trash bags. So this stuff's been going on for, oh my gosh. for like for forever. And um, yeah, it's been going on for a long time. <laughs> how do they get out of it like do they like how do people react to that do they like rip out of it or yeah well some people did and then some people just let let you know let's see what dante's gonna do or whatever um we had we made people go in without their shoes on because we had marbles on the floor oh it was bad it, it, it was ridiculous it was ridiculous uh my friend's sister was crying yeah it, it was it was like uh yeah you know we've we've had a lot of people through the years either throw up in our bathroom or mm. cry or yeah some weird stuff some funny stuff but but we've been doing i've been doing haunted houses since i was a kid yeah yeah so it's always been i've always loved it <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> oh my gosh so something that actually inspired glenn with his videos is he shows the ticket at the beginning of his videos because you did in the past and I wanted to know what started that because like no one else was doing that at the time. It was inspired by um, concerts. Oh, okay. Uh, so because I valued um, concerts and, and really, to be honest, it's probably mostly going to be movies at that time. Okay. Um, I valued the ticket stub when I went to go see a movie. Okay. And I treated it as a treasure. It was uh -huh. it, it was like a, a party favor, you know. Uh -huh. um, and so I would collect the ticket stubs for mm -hmm. movies, and and then simultaneously I said, I have to collect the ticket stubs from these haunted attractions. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And um, if if they were dirty or they had some fake blood on them or or whatever, even better, you know. And right. I, <laughs> so um, that's what inspired that. Yeah, I, I, I just, and I wanted people to see the ticket stub because haunts were doing different things with their stubs. Yeah. They, they had different art on them. And, and, and like some of them looked amazing. Yes, and they did. So, and, and they would change them year by year, some haunts. Some haunts just kept the same one over and over. Like, you ever notice how some haunts, they're using a ticket stub from years ago that doesn't even have those haunts on them anymore and they're like <laughs> they're like they're still, they're still using them you're like all right that's but, funny <laughs> but, but i love those the, the when haunts would change their stub year by year oh man that's so cool yeah it's a collector's thing for me yeah I guess, totally. you know? so yeah yeah <laughs> i have a collection of ticket stubs I haven't collected every one of them. Nowadays, a lot of stuff is QR codes. So uh, I know, I know, I hate that. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's like digital movies and digital music. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's where that came from, just from the love of it, you know. But if you're lucky, you take the QR code and go to the ticket booth, and they give you a real one. If you're lucky, yes, yes, I, I. I the thing I don't like is when they print out those real flimsy sheets of paper. Oh they're yeah, like, they're only black and white, and they're just like, and then they actually the ink disappears through time. Wow! Like, I have a couple of them, and after about five or six years, I had to take a pen and trace <laughs> because <laughs> it was like it was disappearing, like it was like disappearing ink. I don't know what the hell it was. It's like you see paper. Like that receipt paper type stuff, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's wild. Yeah, <laughs> I know you went to a lot of mom and pop haunts. You talked about that earlier, and I wanted to know out of those, which ones were your favorites out of that? Because I know you went to a lot of them. Devil's Folly. Devil's Folly. All right. <laughs> Devil's Devil's Folly. Um, 
still talk about it. I still think about it. Um, I'm so grateful that we were able to film our movies in there. They were one of the haunts that we were able to do that with. Um, there was nothing. It, it was. I, I still remember the first year we found it. We drove up and you always know the good ones when you say to yourself, what the hell is this? Yeah. Like, because um, that's. <laughs> That's what we said when we first discovered Halls of Horror. We were there the first, we found the Halls of Horror by accident. It was just an accident. And I remember saying, mm, brand new. Look at it. What is this? Go it looks horrible. Like, what is this? Oh, jeez. Um, and, uh, you know, it changed our lives, obviously. Yeah. Devil's Folly. You know, obviously, Devil's Folly, the freaking fun house, and Easton Haunts, which I've already name dropped. Yes. Um, stole my heart but if i were to pick my absolute favorite it's going to be devil's folly um uh, we had the, the the pleasure thankfully of, of going to devil's folly probably three to four times um i think we went twice in one year actually one nice. time um and uh you know <laughs> when when you go to a haunt and you go down a slide yes balloons Oh, like a cool. slide of bones and you wind up in a pit that seems dangerous um when there are twins at a haunt these two guys that are certifiably insane like in real life just crazy like just bonkers you have the owner of a haunt mm -hmm. employing his five kids in the haunt. Already, you're playing with different territory, and and when when the haunt is in a real barn that's his property, he already owned like he owned the property. Um, I'll never forget when we left the first time we did it. We literally were talking in the parking lot because we did not understand what was going on. Like we were just confused. Like oh. we, the first time we did it, we weren't even sure if we liked it oh, okay. um, because it was so confusing. Like it, it, it was as if they, they, the best haunts are the ones that seem like they were made by people who have never been to a haunt convention before. Okay. <laughs> who have never been to a haunt before. Like, uh, yeah. it's like they were aliens that came from another planet and just <laughs> were like, we're going to do a haunted house. Okay. And, and it was just, it was bonkers. Like, it was just bonkers. Um, and um, it was scary. And it was weird. Most of all, Glenn knows this. The thing that matters to me the most is atmosphere. I want to feel it. I want to feel that Halloween atmosphere. I want to feel it's the same thing with movies. My wife makes fun of me because there are movies I've seen 15 times. And on the 15th time, I'll say to her, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that was her daughter. And she'll look at me and say, what movie are you what? What are you at? Are you crazy? <laughs> like, that's part of the plot. Like, what's wrong with you? And I'm so caught up in the feeling of the movie that oh. plot is secondary um, oftentimes. So that's the same thing with haunted houses. Um, and I actually prefer haunted houses that don't have a theme. Okay. I don't want just one theme. I don't want to, like, I want just chaos. Like, you go in one room and a girl's chopping up this girl. And then you go to another room and, and there's clowns. And then you go to another room and it's, it's like, what? Like, because that's what I remember as a kid. Um, okay, okay. Uh, so, Devil's Folly, if, you know, if you watch those seven uh, one-minute clips, mm -hmm. you'll know exactly why I love them so much. I'm going to watch them after this. <laughs> I think we, I think if you actually search Devil's Folly on YouTube, I think we have the, we might have the only videos up for it. So, oh, wow. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So that's a good thing because we can immortalize them, you know.
Yes. So the mom and pops though, man. Amazing. Amazing. They just, you know, Devil's Folly, Easton Haunts, freaking fun house. Halls of Horror, when they first started, were even more underground. Like, I mean, it was just, they weren't brutal back then. They weren't extreme, you know. Um, it was just terrifying. Like, but Devil's Folly, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to give it to them. I, I, uh, I still like, uh, I still think about it. I still think about them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've been some wild places, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did, you know, there's just, just something about them, man. Um, and I don't consider I don't consider the ones in Canada mom and pops. Okay. Um, but I mean, I guess in a way they are, but they're open 365 days a year. Um, so they're almost like attractions, but they're they're some of the most extreme haunted houses that we've ever been that my wife and I have ever have ever been to. Um, uh, you have to sign a waiver. No, um, they're not extreme in that sense. Oh, okay, uh, okay. They're extreme in the sense of psychological torment. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Um, so, like, I actually had to bail the first time we did one of them uh, because I lost my mind completely um and uh but those yeah i don't know if you could call them mom and pops but they're they're you know some of them aren't there anymore uh the again the real hardcore ones aren't there anymore the ones where they didn't have a safe word um and it was so claustrophobic that they physically couldn't pull you out um the guy i'll never forget it was a place called screamers okay and I have a t-shirt of it still. Oh, yeah. And um, I have it right here. Oh, wow. I framed it. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. So it was a frame, nice. a streamer's house of horrors. And um, we went up to the front desk. Yeah. And the guy, nobody's dressed in costume, right? And the guy's just like, take us 15 bucks. Just says this, right? I'm like, what is this? Yeah, you know I mean, this is weird. So, and he's like, um, oh, by the way, if you're claustrophobic, don't go in. <laughs> and my wife knows my phobias, and I immediately said, two tickets, please. And my wife looked at me like, are you out of your? Are you completely out of your mind? October panic attack, and um, he said to us. Here's a news article on the wall, and we're like looking at it, and it was a girl had a seizure. Oh dang! Leaving the haunt that we were about to go into, and he was displaying it proudly. <laughs> and I and he said to us, "I said why? I was like, what do you mean it's claustrophobic?" He said, "Oh, once you go in, we can't physically get you out." I was like. And and I will I will tell you, it was the most claustrophobic I have ever been in my entire life. Wow. Um, they should have had a weight limit in there. It was horrible, horrible. You had you had to suck you had to suck your stomach in to get through the walls. Some of them, yeah, yeah, bad screamers. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I guess that was mom and pop too. I don't know. Usually I ask people, like, what are your top three haunts you would want to go to and everything. But for you, Dante, I asked if you could do any haunt over again, what would you do? But I assume you just answered that with the uh, Devil's Folly, if that's going to be your answer. Yeah. Yeah, Devil's Folly and, and, and probably East and Haunts. Again, those those two. Um, of course, they're both gone. And, and they... Uh, because we were filming and we were a part of their lives, we got to see their financial financial turmoil. Uh -huh. um, we got to see them lose things and stuff like that. So it's a real thing, but those would be the ones right there. My wife and I have always had an affinity uh, it, it, when it comes to big the big ones. We've always had an affinity to Penhurst. Um, and um, 
I've actually had numerous panic attacks uh, at, <laughs> um, in the tunnel and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, yeah, Devil's Folly and um, and and uh, Eastern Haunts. I miss him. Yeah, I miss him. And of course, Dracula's Castle from Wildwood Boardwalk. That would be great, you know, but that's burned down and gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Would you do them now if they were still open? If Devil's Folly and Easton was still open today, would you would you come out of quote unquote like retirement and go out to them? Yeah, I probably would. I mean, you know, I have I with with my health issues and stuff, I would uh, I would be in tune with what I'm going through and stuff. Obviously, I would I would have like you know my mask on and everything, but I would be right. um, if I could do it physically i'd be there definitely yeah because um there's uh there's a special magic you know um and uh you know but there's been an evolution too i'm, I'm experiencing halloween magic in a different way now mm -hmm. um and uh now i'm putting on haunted houses and dinners for my daughter um on a daily basis like we live in this world for 61 days um so there's like that thing too so there's you know and it so it, there's kind of that evolution there um and it thankfully it works with the way my health is too and stuff so it's kind of you know but i would definitely make it an attempt man i'd make an attempt i know that glenn has the ritual of listening to halloween music like custom mixtapes he makes and having punk and donuts what's your haunt ritual what's uh what's my what ritual what's your ritual before going to a haunted attraction oh yeah yeah um i would um um uh, well i always have a mix of halloween music uh playing in the car but before we would get in the car mm -hmm. there would be i remember there would be incense burning uh, in the house. There would be uh, maybe a candle. Um, there would be mute. The mix would be playing in the house. Oh, um, nice. Okay, so so before we would actually go to the van, we'd have to turn and blow out everything. We'd have to turn everything off. Um, <laughs> so we'd almost be living in a haunted house before we went into, uh, before we went in. Yeah. So... And that was really before I started, you know, having my health issues where I had dietary restrictions and stuff like that. But like Glenn, you know, or like in, just in general, I would be, you know, I'd have some some Halloween treats, maybe some candy. They would have some uh, donuts or, you know, there, there'd be there'd be some stuff going on there. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. yeah. I've I've heard your mixed CDs. They're, they're, you know, kind of boring, mediocre. But uh... <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, there was one song you always put on your Halloween mix, and I, I think I, I want to know what, what inspired you to put it on because it's so unique and so uncommon. That was the Halloween theme by John Carpenter. What uh, <laughs> what made you put that on? There? You know, it's weird. I mean, it's like, it sounds like the fall to me for some reason. Yeah, but no, seriously, there was a song that you always put on there, and it's um, Billy Idol's "Eyes Without a Face." And I've never heard anyone put that song on any Halloween mix other than you. And I want to know your connection to that song with the Halloween yeah. season. So I have such a connection to that song that now we do Halloween dinners for 61 nights in our house. from so September 1st to October 31st. And the Halloween mix is playing while we eat dinner. Okay. And it's on a shuffle. So we don't know what, you know what it's going to be. So last night, Eyes Without a Face came on. And I stood up out of the chair, and my daughter knows the song now and everything. There are actually, there's another Billy Idol song that's part of my mix also, which is Flesh for Fantasy. Um, so it's those two, but predominantly Eyes Without a Face. Why? What's weird about it, man, is I cannot explain it, but the song gives me a halloween feeling 
Um, and apart from the fact that the lyrics are about a horror movie, I mean, apart from the fact, I didn't even know that. Like, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was it was inspired by the film Eyes Without a Face. I, I didn't know that. Um, I didn't even see that movie by that, you know, but when I got into the song or, or whatever. Um, but it's the feel of it. It's the sound of it. And the way the song starts, as soon as you push play, it just goes, and it's it's i don't mm, there's certain it's a feeling i and i can't explain it there are a lot of songs on our mix that some people have heard what the hell how's that a halloween song what the hell what is that um like there's an ozzy osbourne song uh shot in the dark it's another one that i'm just obsessed with during the halloween season um so eyes without a face is it's not only a Halloween song for me. It's actually one of my favorite songs of all time. Um, if I were to make a list of you know songs, um, he Billy Idol actually has three of my favorite songs of all time, and they tend to be on my Halloween mixes. Uh, Flesh for Fantasy, Eyes Without Face, and Rebel Yell is another one. I don't know what it is, man. It's weird. It's very very weird. So yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's awesome. You, know, you might be the only person to ever put that song, but it, it does. If you if you know the song, it, it really does fit into like this Halloween theme. If if you yeah, do it. yeah, I'm gonna have to listen to it now. I never heard. Yeah. That. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's really it's a, it's a really good song, it's, and it does have like that kind of undertone creepiness to it. The video is pretty creepy too. I looked, I watched the video for the first time in years, and I was like, oh, yeah, damn. Like Billy Idol's videos were kind of creepy back in the day, <laughs> yeah. So that's how, yeah, that's how that goes. Music is a really important part. When I decorate the house, mm -hmm. I put the mix on my phone and put it in my back pocket, so I'm hearing the music wherever I go. Yeah. Okay. So that it is really important to me. That's a ritual. That's a big fall ritual. Yeah, for me. <laughs> I'm curious because I I'm not sure if you talked about this before. Have you ever done any horror-themed escape rooms? And if you have, would you do it again? Okay. Um, I uh, have never, and I don't have any interest um, okay. in, in doing them. Um, my wife has has uh, shown interest even before they became big. Like, okay. when they first started, she would be like, oh, I want to check that out. I, uh, just for me personally, mm -hmm. um, they I relate them to puzzles. Okay. And I hate puzzles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and, um, but I, I don't, I, I, just for me personally, I just don't associate them with Halloween. Um, okay. I don't consider them like a haunted house. They're like another thing. Um, it's like almost like, um, it's like a problem solving type of thing. Although yeah. I'm going to eat my words because there was a haunt years I know ago. Been, I know you've been to one. I know you've done one. And they did it in the haunted way. They did it the right way. Um, and they're called uh, Halloween Park. Halloween Park. Thank you. Which which now are now closed. But of yes, course. the whole thing was like an escape room, go from room to room. And yeah. it was way scary. before escape rooms were were what they are now. Yeah. It was scary too. Really scary. So I think that's the thing, man. If if they were scary, yeah. I would be more apt to do it. But if it's just like, let's figure this out, not my bag. But if you're going to make it scary like Halloween Park, oh my gosh, that was like, I was like, get me out of this room. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, and I know they're really big now. And the thing is that they're really big with people who don't even like horror. Like people who don't go to haunted houses go to escape rooms. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's another thing that I don't like about them is that you have people who hate haunted houses going to them. Uh, okay. And I'm like, ah, you, you, you guys don't even like the haunted houses, and you're going to. That. <laughs> uh, that's funny. No, but but that's cool. That's cool that people are doing that in the off season. Yes. There's there's people, there's haunts who are doing escape rooms to make money on the off season. Yes. That's great. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. So one you should definitely check out if you like a scary escape room. I've heard that 13th hour haunted house, they have escape rooms. I've heard they actually have scare actors in the rooms scaring you when you're doing it. 
Really? Yeah, so you should definitely check that out. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And I've heard of them. Okay, yeah, really cool. Okay, awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. This was this is awesome, man. This has been yeah. great. This has really been great. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for talking to us. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, I love your channel, man. I really, really do. Yeah. And I look forward to the new content you guys have. And I just... I really love uh, I love the chemistry you you two have and Thank and you. of course because I'm so obsessed with Slasher Dave yes. to see that <laughs> I, I, I've actually I've actually watched pieces of that interview more than once. Oh, nice! But I'll go back and I will like rewatch. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> very cool. awesome. So I've been John from the Haunt Informer, and I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And this was episode 35 of Fall Informer. Thank you very much for talking to us, Dante. And until next time, happy hauntings. Thanks, guys. <laughs>